Okay, let me let me just transition here. It, what are your expectations, or what should the expectations be for UNLV football? Uh, I'll leave basketball. The, the, the days of Tark, those are over. But let's just talk about football, because when we talk about UNLV, and you guys are in Las Vegas, I lived in Las Vegas for three years, so we can speak on this. But when people talk about Las Vegas and they talk about UNLV athletics, they say, well, they got the city, they've got the weather, they've got the campus, they've got the facilities, which makes me pause and say, really? Odom is getting a good gig here. You know, he was running the defense at Arkansas after coaching for years at Missouri. This is a good hire for UNLV. Arroyo had done a good job. His program had started to progress. I think there was some inner strife. Amal, you may be able to touch on this with Arroyo. After year three, he was let go. Five and seven last year, started four and one, fell apart late. A lot of that had to do with Arroyo getting fired. And frankly, they got an upgrade at head coach in Odom. So we can talk about the coach. We can talk about the program. But let's start with the macro picture, UNLV. It, the city itself plays to degenerates that fly in with their boys that are in their mid-40s. It's not for kids that are underage trying to get a fake ID hit in the strip. The idea of the strip in Las Vegas, it's not really what it's positioned as if you're living in Michigan and watching on television. I mean, Las Vegas is about Henderson. It's about Summerlin. It's about the suburbs. Like, And then you talk about the campus, downtown, UNLV. It's not necessarily a hub of electricity. It's spaced out. You kids drive all around the campus. It's not necessarily the most walkable. It's not aesthetically pleasing. Like, should we be judging UNLV as the strip when we're talking about athletics? No, you're correct on that. I like your breakdown of it. But I just don't think this program – basketball is easy to elevate because all you need is two or three players. Football, obviously, you need a lot more to be successful. And they have not had a history of being successful. They've even hired guys like John Robinson in the past in the early 2000s, came in here. Obviously, he had great success at USC. I just think this is a difficult program. It's a commuter school. You've got to really be able to recruit the West Coast well and convince people to come here. If you can do that, you could get to being a competitive program. I, I just don't think they're one that can become an upper echelon program in the Mountain West. I think there will always be more of a basketball school, and then you can mix in a season or two where you have success. And anybody that does well here, I think, is eventually going to be a springboard, like we talked about in the MAC conference, going to other leagues. And I think that's the situation Barry Odom finds himself in. This is a guy that has played at uh, Missouri, was a GA at Missouri, was a, a coach on their staff, coached at Memphis and coached at Arkansas, as you alluded to, and the former head coach at the Missouri Tigers. And now he's in a place where he doesn't really have any ties. And so if he does have success here over a couple of seasons, people are going to be like, hey, right. listen, he turned around a program that Arroyo took over, uh, the former coach from Bishop Gorman. I forgot his name, Tony um, Sanchez. And, you know, you look at it, and he's a guy. This would be a springboard to another program. That's all it is. Now, from his perspective, he's like, hey, even if I'm a decent coach and I coach here 10 years, Vegas is a very livable city. You're not in some small podunk town, maybe where some people don't want to be. But this is a major metropolitan international city, really. And so I think from a big picture perspective, Patrick, I don't think this program should have expectations like we talked about with Arizona State, who should be better than they are. I think UNLV would have a hard time. Remember the other thing, you, yourself, Dustin, myself, all of us are transplants. Majority of the people, it feels like here are transplants. So to generate the local support also is more difficult. 100%. They've had one winning season since 2000, UNLV. Two winning seasons in conference play since joining the Mountain West in 98. Pay attention, big guy. That ain't great. Amal framed it well. Barry Odom's a good hire. There are no expectations. It's an awesome job. But is it an awesome destination for kids? It's always painted as Vegas. The perception of Vegas is different than the campus. You said it well. It's a commuter school. When we return, win total set at six, juiced up 180 to the under. So maybe that true number is five and a half. Is UNLV football going over or under? We'll discuss. Okay, we got you back. We got guests coming up. So kind of we're laying it out as far as UNLV and the total set at six for Barry Odom in year one. What's interesting is for like five minutes, he had Bobby Petrino about to run his offense, which would have been crazy. And they should have a good offense. We'll get into why. Uh, but Bobby Petrino got a call from A&M and he bailed. That's understandable. Also, it's Bobby Petrino. Unsavory. He's not going to stick with his word. But Barry Odom, a good hire. But is UNLV a good program? Now, we were talking a little bit during the break. People say city, they say weather, they say campus, they say facilities. I know nothing about the facili facilities. You two will fill me in. I've been on the UNLV campus, commuter school, spread out, 
no vibe, no center, no I'm on I'm in college, nothing you see on television. Television what you see with Vegas is right over the right over there over the horizon and that's the strip, but the kids they don't have money. They're not going to enjoy the strip. It's just a different vibe. Big guy, we were talking a little bit during the break about comps where the perception doesn't necessarily equal the reality and you've got a few. Yeah, so I think with what's what's tough one about the Barry Odom hire is like I do think like he's an adult. He's a guy who can stabilize the program. I don't see him being a long-term solution for sustained success. But when you look at this program, I think you need to be representative of the city. There needs to be some risk, some fun, some kind of shtick to get people here, to get the players to come here, because there's no other reason for them to come here if you're just going to be a regular football program. So, like, go get, like, that co- that high school coach that goes for it on fourth down every time and never punts. Like, something like that. Someone they tried some- that with Sanchez. Literally the <laughs> best high school football coach right down the road at Bishop Gorman, and he was a disaster. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying, like, I need more shtick than just he was at a great high school football program. I don't know what it is. The question is, can you win with the leftovers? Because if anyone's any good from Bush- Bishop Gorman, USC is coming here. UCLA is coming here. Arizona State, Oregon, all the pack. Even Boise State's going to take them. So can you be good enough with the rest of the programs? That leads me to put them on the same level as, can you be good as a Georgia State? Can you be as good as a UAB? Can you be as good as an FAU who have to take the best of the rest that's left after the big programs come into their backyard and pluck out the the four and five stars? Okay. Having said that, it's the Mountain West. The Mountain West just got diluted. They're, I look at the odds right now. They're 18 to 1. Like, should they be expected to do more? You've got your Boise State. You've got your Fresno States. There is no distinction between Fresno State, which, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, I'm not a big latitude and longitude guy. <laughs> it's in the middle of a cornfield. Like, there's nothing to Fresno State that would indicate it should be a bigger program than UNLV. No, no. And they've, had, they've always had better coaching. Like, it, you have to get in good coaches that are innovative. I don't know Barry Odom either way. Like, I, I don't want to be too tough on what happened at Missouri because Missouri's been mostly irrelevant since Chase Daniel and Jeremy Macklin anyway. But maybe he is a guy who can be innovative, and, and that gives them a fighting chance here. You know, well, I will certainly defensively, he's going to be better. Go ahead. Amal. No, you're absolutely right. They'll be much better defensively. But I look at, like, Pat Hill got that program going in the right direction. Uh I think when you look at the San Joaquin Valley there, that's the only program there, right? Like here in Vegas, there's so many other options. We talked about the school not having much of a campus. I think all those things are a factor. When you look at whether it's Arizona State, Miami, UCLA, these are all to a certain extent. They do have great campuses, but at the same time, they have a ton of commuters. And if you look at their football programs, yes, Miami's had a great amount of success. But there's so much talent in Dayton, Broward County, that if you literally just put a fence around that, those two counties, you could win national championships every year. Um, and I think it's tough in cities where you have other options. Okay. Big picture. Look at UNLV. Let's narrow in on the program this year. I mentioned six as far as regular season win total over at DraftKings. Huge juice on the under at minus 180. Could be headed to five and a half, obviously. I mentioned Bobby Petrino. So that was going to be a big, big hire, fellas, for Barry Odom. But he got the call from a and Here comes Brennan Marion. Who is the OC? He's had 11 gigs in 12 years. I know nothing about the cat. We shall see. I do like the quarterback. You saw him last year, Brumfield, Doug Brumfield. He's the tall lefty, 6'6", from Inglewood, California. I think there's some promise there. Uh, Cameron Friel also in the mix. Uh, Wide receivers all came from the transfer portal for this year's UNLV team. Um, Aiden Robbins bailed left for BYU, the running back, but Vincent Davis is in from Pitt. He's good. Courtney Reese, seven yards per carry. So there's some runners here, a defense that's Odom specialty. They should be pretty good this year. Uh, again, Arroyo, they had him improved each of the three years. He started off four and one last year, then lost six of seven. Six feels lofty. Let's d- dig into the team this year, Amal. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. This team wasn't great offensively. Uh, they've got to get better in that area. Look, they average in the mid-20s in terms of scoring points per game. In college football today, guys, if you're going to be competitive, you've got to be in the 30s. And that's where right now, to me, the key is defensively, they weren't anemic. 
but you know, still gave up almost 29 points per game. I think we'll see an improvement on that side with Barry Odom. You mentioned uh, Brennan Marion coming in. This guy's been all over the place, but I'll tell you what, Patrick, looking at his bio, what I like and respect is last year he was at Texas as a passing game coordinator. Um, he has really worked his way up. High school ranks, uh, collegiate ranks, coached at Howard, among a variety of other places. I think sometimes when you've got that much uh, movement, it may look bad from a resume standpoint, but I think it gives you an opportunity to see different things and what they're able to do. When you look at this team, the one benefit is they do have Doug Brumfield back at quarterback, played 10 games last year, but averaged less than 200 yards passing per game. He's got Ricky White back, who's their leading receiver, but had just over 600 yards receiving. They're not a prolific offensive team. They bring in Vincent Davis, who averaged better than five yards per carry at Pittsburgh last year. But again, didn't get a ton of opportunities uh, sitting behind Israel. I forgot his last name now with the Jets, but... To me, when I look at this team, the offense, if they can be a little bit more sustaining on drives, I think they've got an opportunity to be better. They, they were competitive. They need to be able to finish out some games and make some plays uh, late in games. I think they could be a team that could potentially get to a bowl game. Will they push on the six and go bowling in Odom's first year, big guy? Man, that is tough. Especially when you have Michigan on the schedule, right? Brian will be a win in week one. Michigan's obviously a loss. They're not beating Vanderbilt, especially week three, with so many transfers on the defensive side of the ball and trying to get that situated. Then they go to UTEP, which is a really tough game. They're not winning that. They beat Hawaii a year ago, and it's here in U uh, in Vegas, so they should be favored there because Hawaii stinks off the island. Then they go to Reno. That's always tough. Colorado State's always good. Fresno State is, is always good. Oh, man, I would lean under here. I do not like the way the schedule plays out for them, especially the early and middle parts of the schedule. I, you know, if you're looking at the schedule, Patrick, here's how I would break it down very quickly. I agree with Dustin on Michigan, Vanderbilt. I will throw an Air Force as a loss. Um, you know, the one thing I'm looking for, are you getting seven victories? I don't see seven on the calendar for these guys. It's tough. What happened with Arroyo? We saw him when he got there. He was all over commercials. He was pimping cars. And, and by the way, that was a guy. That was really a different good personality. Thing. I'm sorry. That was like a different way of them. Do, they were like, we're going to get in on the ground on this guy. He's a young up and comer. He's from a big program. Like, let's take the big time. They've tried every other way with coaches. That was like to them, like we're, we're trying something different. And it bombed. I, I think it was a combination of a couple of things. He came in from Oregon. Uh, they were competitive. And then the wheels fell off last year. You wound up with a new athletic director. Anytime you get a new AD, your most important hire is going to be the football coach. And I think they decided to go in a different direction. And look, nobody's going to care. Even though he started out his first year in the COVID year, 0-6, then he goes 2-10, and and then 5-7, and obviously showing some signs of improvement but I don't think it came fast enough for the new athletic director. And that's why you saw the change made seven and 23 overall for Marcus Arroyo. And guys, I got to tell you, Barry Odom has four years of experience. Wasn't prolific at Mizzou, but wasn't bad either. I think this is a upgrade compared to where they were with Marcus Arroyo. But at the end of the day, you know, there's certain programs and certain sports you sit there and go, it's just going to be tough to win at. I think UNLV, a phenomenal year is seven and five and a realistic year is four and eight or five and seven for them. Go to vsun.com slash subscribe to become a vsun pro subscriber today.